In my meditation and in my prayer, I often like to use poetry and hymns to be the sort of foundation and the framework of my thought and my reflection. I'm always reminded of those words. When you buy a book of poetry, you get uh, fewer pages for your money, but you get far more meaning. And that same is true when it comes to singing hymns or reflecting on hymns, because the poet and the hymn writer, they synthesize so many words, so many thoughts, and they bring them into a very succinct way of thinking and praying. So if I may, during this reflection for Lent and Passion Tide, just reflect with you on one of my favourite hymns for this season. It's called My Song is Love Unknown, and it was written by a man called Samuel Crossman in the 17th century. The words are absolutely beautiful, and many of you will be familiar, I'm sure, with the, the music. My song is love unknown, my Saviour's love to me, love to the loveless shown, that I might lovely be. Very poetic words. We may not express them in that way in our own modern language, but we all understand what they mean. We sing the praises of God in the person of Jesus Christ and the love that God has for us. We can hardly, we can hardly put it into words because how can you define the meaning of love? People have tried over the generations to define, express, describe what love means. And yet the words simply fail us when you are in the presence of somebody you love. So it's not surprising that Samuel Crossman uh, describes my saviour's love to me is a love unknown. How can I comprehend the love that God has for me? especially if at times I can hardly love myself. The verse goes on and says, From his blessed throne he came to bestow salvation, but we made strange and none the longed-for Christ would know. Well, we understand that, don't we? In the words of the New Testament, the Bible, the Gospels, that, yes, there were people who were drawn to Jesus, but there were many who were alienated from him because of the radical nature of what he was demanding. External ritual, external worship is not an end in itself. It is a means to an end. And if there is a gap between what you are saying or singing in your worship of God and what you are doing in the everyday activities of your life, then your worship is worthless. This was the hypocrisy that Jesus continued to point out and which caused so many people to become alienated from him. And in the third verse of this lovely uh, his way and his sweet praises sing, resounding all the day, Hosanna to the then crucify is all their breath, and for his death they thirst and cry. We're familiar, aren't we, with uh, when things are going well and we are at ease with ourselves and with the things of God, we can give thanks to God for all the good things we have received. And yet, in everybody's life, there comes times of uh, alienation and upset and hurt and pain and failure. And uh, where is God in the midst of this? And why does God allow this to happen? And what have I done to deserve it? These are all reflections of that cry. Sometimes they strew his way and sweet Hosanna sing. And then when things are not to their liking, to our liking, 
crucify is all their breath. Why, what has my Lord done? What makes this rage and spite? What has my Lord done except nothing but revealing the love of God and the challenge of being faithful to the revelation of God, no matter what the consequences, no matter what the price. And uh, our great martyrs over the ages of the church have been prepared to pay that ultimate price for justice, integrity and truth. How easy it is in our own age to uh, conform to external ritual and yet adopt the patterns of behavior of the age in which we live. That sort of conflict, if you like, uh, which is at the heart, I think, of so many of our, our lives and our circumstances, needs somehow to be resolved in order to approach the throne of grace, integrity, and justice, and truth. And the final, the final verse is so moving uh, when one concludes our reflection for these Lenten days. Here might I stay and sing, no story so divine. Never was love, dear King, never was grief like mine. This is my friend, my friend indeed, in whose sweet praise I all my days could gladly spend. What greater privilege could there be than spending our days, our lives, our thoughts, our hopes, our eternity in union with God through and with the person of Jesus Christ, his Son, in the power of his Holy Spirit?